everybody. Really missing you. I can't wait to see you all again soon back in school. Well, for now, we're going to be doing our schoolwork at home. And I'm really excited to read you this lovely story that we've got today. In fact, I've just been outside where it's really chilly and I've just lit a nice fire here behind me to keep me nice and warm. And today's story we're going to be reading is all about some creatures who live in a very, very, very cold place. In fact, some of the coldest places on earth. Our story is called Poles Apart and it's written by a lady called Jean Willis and someone called Jarvis has done the pictures. And in our story, Poles Apart, two creatures meet each other. Do you know what this one is here? It's a polar bear. And then down here, can you see we've got some penguins? Now really, polar bears and penguins, they would never meet because polar bears live at the North Pole and penguins live at the South Pole. So opposite ends of our planet. But in this story that we're going to read today, they do meet each other and it's quite funny what happens. Shall we get started? Okay, Poles Apart by Jean Willis and Jarvis. As everyone knows, penguins are found at the South Pole and never at the North Pole, at least not until the day Pilchard Browns got lost on their way to a picnic. There they are, look, can you see them on the iceberg there? Mr Pilchard Brown was in charge of the map. He told everyone to turn right at the snowman, which was wrong. Now here they all were on the other side of the world. Mr and Mrs Pilchard Brown, Peaky, Poots and Pog, they must be the little penguins drifting towards an enormous furry white <gasps> something. Well, they've never seen this before. What is it? That's right, it's a polar bear. Is it a lion? Is it a tiger? Asked Peaky and Poots. Is it a picnic blanket? Asked Pog. The enormous something looked them up and down. He had never seen anything like the Pilchard Browns before. I'm Mr White, he said. I'm a polar bear. And you are? We're penguins, said Mrs Pilchard Brown. What are you doing here? wondered Mr White. This is where polar bears live, not penguins. We're going to a picnic at the South Pole said Pog. This is the North Pole, my friends, said Mr White. The South Pole is 12,430 miles that way. Oh, don't think of it as a mistake, said Mr White. Think of it as a big adventure. I have often dreamt of being the first polar bear to reach the South Pole. And there he is thinking about it. Mummy says we should always follow our dreams, said Peaky. Lead the way, Mr White, said Mrs Pilchard Brown. So he's going to help them to find their way back home, isn't he? The penguins followed Mr, w Mr White over land and sea. Eek, said Peaky. Whoa, said Poots. Can we have our picnic now, said Pog. But it wasn't the best spot. So they followed Mr. White all the way to, oh no, look, I think they're sharks, quickly out of the way. I wonder where they'll end up. Oh, America! Howdy, said Mr. Pilchard Brown. Oh, busy, said Peaky. Buzzing, said Poots. Can we have our picnic, said Pog. Not now, dear, said Mrs. Pilchard Brown. How do you do? said Mr Pilchard Brown. Grey, said Peaky. Because it's a bit rainy, isn't it? Grand, said Poots. Can we have our picnic, said Pog. 
Not now, dear, said Mrs Pilchard Brown. England was very charming, but it wasn't home. Now here, I think they're in London. You can see, look, they've got one of the big red London buses and there is Big Ben. Wow. So they're going to, oh, let's have a look. <gasps> India. Namaste, said Mr Pilchard Brown. <gasps> Hot, said Peaky. Huge, said Poots. India was dazzling, but it wasn't home. So they followed Mr White all the way to Australia. Good day, said Mr Pilchard Brown. Faster, said Peaky. Fun, said Poots. Can you see they're on a speedboat there? Can we have our picnic now, said Pog. Soon, said Mrs Pilchard Brown. Australia was Bonza, but it still wasn't home. So they followed Mr White. Over the land and over the sea, on and on they went. But of all the wonderful places in the world, there was no place like home. Are we nearly there yet? said Peaky, Poots and Pog. It's not far now, said Mr White. And they followed him left, right, left, right, all the way home. Oh, please stay, Mr White, said Peaky and Poots. You can share our picnic, said Pog. So Mr White stayed and for a while he was happy. So they're at the South Pole now, aren't they? But the South Pole wasn't his home. He was a polar bear and polar bears don't live here. Which is why he said goodbye and walked 12,430 miles all the way back to the North Pole where he belonged. He'd followed his wildest dream and had the best adventure. Even so, he was sad to think that he would never see a penguin again. But to Mr White's delight, he did. Hello, how did you get there, he said. Where is your family? And there's a tiny baby penguin just hatching out. Of an egg. Here we are, said Mr Pilchard Brown. Someone put my egg in your hat, said Mrs Pilchard Brown. Peaky and Poots pointed at Pog. Can we have our picnic now, he said. And although the North Pole isn't home to penguins, Mr White was always happy to see friends. Welcome back, he said. Oh, wow, wasn't that a lovely story? Well, we're going to be doing lots of work thinking about the North Pole and the South Pole this week. And first of all, I want us to have a little look at a map or a globe and to see if we can spot where the North Pole and the South Pole are. So we'll be doing that in a few minutes. Hoyle Bauer, see you in a minute. Bye bye.